Hi guys, it's Claire. Welcome back. Today I am here with a lazy little book haul for you. I had initially intended to post my February reading wrap up today, but I technically only finished reading two books in the month of February, and I am currently about halfway through a third one, which is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. And I do want to finish reading this book to include in that wrap up, A, because the Gregorian calendar is a construct, and also because I think the structure of this book will be interesting to discuss alongside one of the other books that I read in February. So I just need a few more days to kind of collect all of my thoughts about that. And also, I don't know about you, but I found February to just be a pretty sh month all around, just like physically, emotionally, existentially draining. 11 and a half months into the pandemic, I guess that's where I'm at. And so I thought I would do an uncharacteristically chatty, laid back, low effort kind of video talking about some of the books I've added to my bookshelf in the last few months. Do keep your eyes peeled for my February reading wrap up in a few days time, but until then, let's get cozy and do a little book haul. First up, I wanted to mention a few books that I have recently added to my bookshelf that I had previously read either on NetGal or out from the library. I do tend to do a lot of my reading out from the library or kind of from NetGalley on my Kindle and then if I really end up loving a book I do like to get a finished copy to kind of add to my collection and also just support authors, that kind of thing. Perhaps unsurprisingly, these are all books that did end up on my best books of 2020 list. First up is White Ivy by Susie Yang, which was my favorite book of 2020. I do have to say I'm not a huge fan of glossy finish on books, but you know what? I'll allow it just because I loved this book so much. It also has some really nice end paper to help make up for the glossy. I also got myself a copy of The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon, which is a very cute romantic comedy set at a Seattle radio station. This book is actually um, a nicer finished copy than I was expecting. It has kind of a nice like gritty matte finish. I almost always read romance novels as ebooks and very rarely will I go and get a physical copy of one of them. I think this is only the third romance novel that I've gotten a hardcover copy of so in case you need more evidence of how much I enjoyed this book. And then for Christmas, my little brother also got me a finished copy of Golden Gates Fighting for Housing in America by Connor Doherty, which talks about the housing crisis in California and San Francisco in particular. And I really just enjoyed this book a lot more than I was expecting and enough that after many months I was like, yeah, it would be nice to have a physical copy of this. I also really do love this cover with the San Francisco skyline, uh, which they have changed for the paperback. So I thought I would get a hardcover while they still existed. Speaking of books I got for Christmas, I am now the proud owner of not one but two copies of The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. My dad got me this mass market paperback copy of it and my older brother got me this hardcover copy. Getting it for my dad made more sense because we had been talking about queer book recommendations for one of my friends and he said, oh well it's kind of old but maybe she should try The Left Hand of Darkness. Why my brother got it for me also is just very random and coincidental. But I'm probably gonna keep the one that my dad got for me just for sentimental reasons and then maybe send this one to my friend if she doesn't already have a copy. I have not read an Ursula K. Le Guin book before, uh, but I do want to potentially try and read a little bit more sci-fi this year and I do know that this is a sci-fi classic so I feel like this could be a good place to start with her. And then my older brother also got me a copy of Shame by Salman Rushdie because he will never stop trying to push the Salman Rushdie agenda. I have to say I've never been particularly compelled to read Salman Rushdie but I do feel like this was potentially his best bet just because out of all of his books, it is one of the shorter ones. Apparently this is the book that set the stage for his modern classic, The Satanic Verses, which I have no interest in reading, but anyway, maybe I'll give it a try. And then my friend Amy got me a copy of The Transit of Venus by Shirley Hazard, which I have to be honest, I had never heard of before opening this package that she sent me. I guess this is about two sisters who travel between Australia and Europe from the 50s to the 80s. Um, I have to be honest, the back jacket copy does not provide further illumination beyond that, but I have read kind of in some Goodreads reviews that the writing in this is really lovely. So if anyone out there has read Shirley Hazard before, definitely let me know. This is the first I'm hearing of her, but 
curious to check it out. And then lastly, this was not an explicit Christmas gift. I just stole it off of my dad's bookshelf and that is Exhalation by Ted Chang, which I got my dad a while ago thinking that he might like it. And then I think I decided that he's probably not gonna read it anytime soon. And so I decided to unburden him of it. This is a book of Ted Chang's sci-fi short stories that got a lot of acclaim and buzz when it came out a couple of years ago. Um, one of his short stories was the basis for the movie Arrival, which I really love. And like I said, I am trying to explore more sci-fi this year. And so I am feeling like I'm kind of starting to get in the mood to potentially explore some of these stories. Next up, I have a couple of more academic books that I got off of a running list I keep in a Google Doc called Books Erin Recommends to Me. Erin is a friend of mine who is doing her PhD and always has really great, interesting, academic book recommendations that I wouldn't otherwise be aware of or even think to look for. And the first of those is Playing Indian by Philip J. Deloria, who is a member of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and also an academic who is currently teaching at Harvard. And he is also the son of scholar and activist Vine Deloria Jr., who famously penned Custer Died for Your Sins, an Indian Manifesto. This book was published in 1998, and I believe it is based on the dissertation that he did for his PhD. And this is a book that basically looks at the long and disturbing history of white or non-native Americans co-opting native dress and performing fantasies of nativeness or indigeneity in order to forge a sense of white American or new world identity. And I've read the first chapter so far, which looks at the Boston Tea Party and the members of that rebellion who donned Native American regalia, um, kind of as part of the performance that was the Boston Tea Party. And so far it's just been really, really fascinating uh, way to think about American identity and nationalism and all kinds of things. So um, yeah, I'm excited to keep reading this and then talk about it in more depth in a future wrap up. And then the other more academic book that I got was A Feeling for Books, The Book of the Month Club, Literary Taste and Middle Class Desire by Janice A. Radway, which I mentioned in my 2021 reading goals video as a book that I wanted to read in order to kind of explore various conflicting thoughts that I have about kind of book club fiction, commercial fiction, general fiction, that kind of thing. I really loved her book looking at romance novels and popular literature in American culture and so I'm curious to see what her take on book of the month club is. I will say I am a little bit intimidated by the size of this book and the seeming lack of margins, but you know what? That's okay. A few weeks ago, I also went on a nice little uh, bookstore crawl with Booktube's own Matthew Sharapa. And while we were at McNally Jackson, I picked up a copy of The Roundhouse by Louise Erdrich. I just finished reading Love Medicine, which was my first ever Louise Erdrich, which I will discuss further in my February reading wrap up. Spoiler alert, I really loved it and I'm eager to get to some of her other books and obviously I think The Roundhouse is one of her most popular and acclaimed ones. It won the National Book Award a few years ago. So excited to have another Louise Erdrich on my shelf to hopefully get to soon. And lastly I have a few books that were recently sent to me by publishers. The first is an i-novel by Minae Mizumura translated by Juliet Winters Carpenter. This is out this spring from Columbia University Press. Apart from this latest book I have read all of Minae Mizumura's books that have been translated into English from the original Japanese. The first was a true novel, which was a retelling of Wuthering Heights set in post-war Japan. The other was The Fall of Language in the Age of English, which was kind of about preserving local and national languages that was really fascinating. And then the last one was a book called Inheritance from Mother that was originally published as a serialized novel. I didn't love that one as much, but I always find Minae Mizumura fascinating and engaging as a writer. And this is one of her earlier books that has now just been published in English. I know that in the original Japanese, there were kind of a smattering of English phrases woven into the Japanese and so I do think this book tries to solve that problem by kind of using a combination of bolded and unbolded words. So 
I think that'll be interesting. It sounds like it is semi-autobiographical and looks at um, what it means to write in the era of the hegemony of English and what it means to be a writer of Japanese in particular. And so I think it sounds like there's a lot of themes that she's grappling with here that she later grappled with in a non-fiction setting in The Fall of Language in the Age of English. So I'm eager to get to that and kind of compare it in the context of some of her other books. I was also sent a copy of Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro from Kanaf. Obviously this is one of the uh, more highly anticipated books of this spring and I actually have only ever read one Kazuo Ishiguro book in full. I read Never Let Me Go over 10 years ago and really loved it. I tried to read The Buried Giant when it came out and just was not digging it um and I still do really need to read Remains of the Day because I think I would really enjoy it but what I find interesting about him is just how different all of his books are and so I'm really curious to see if I enjoy this one. Based on some of the early reviews that I've seen for this on Goodreads, it sounds like it is kind of up the alley of people who enjoyed Never Let Me Go, and so I'm hoping that I really enjoy this. It sounds like there's a little bit of kind of a sci-fi element to this one as well. I guess the main character of the book, Clara, is an AI artificial intelligence friend or something like that. I did get Never Let Me Go out from the library because in um, my dream world I could read that and then read Clara and then also read Remains of the Day and just have a kind of Ishiguro readathon, but um, we'll see if that actually happens. And lastly, Kanap also kindly sent me a copy of Crying in H Mart, a memoir by Michelle Zauner. And this, I believe, is an expansion of a piece of the same name that she wrote for The New Yorker, kind of talking about her mother's death and food and grief and identity. Um, and so, yeah, it just sounds good. I really love the cover and I'm just kind of curious to see what it's all about. Apparently the author is kind of a known person in the indie rock scene and is um, known as Japanese Breakfast. Not familiar, but I do think it's interesting when artists kind of dabble in multiple medias and genres. So I'm excited to check this one out. It sounds like it might be quite sad, but also maybe um, kind of cathartic as well. Those are all of the books that I have acquired recently. I would say that out of all of these, the ones that I am probably most eager to finish slash get to are Playing Indian and I Novel and Clara and the Sun, followed by The Roundhouse and Exhalation. So these are my top priorities. So hopefully I will be able to get to these soon and report back. But if you have read any of these and have any that you particularly recommend, definitely let me know in the comments below. And like I said, do keep an eye out for my February reading wrap-up, which will be coming at you soon. Before I head out, I wanted to mention that this video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that offers thousands of classes for creative and curious people looking to develop their passions and explore new skills, whether that be web design, marketing, video editing, drawing, and much more. And speaking of creative outlets, guess who is still doing watercoloring in order to get through this godforsaken pandemic winter? I am. This month I took another one of Skillshare's great watercolor classes. This one was called Art Essentials Learn Watercolor Painting Basics taught by artist Katie Rogers. And what I loved about this class was that it helped me to better understand some of the fundamentals of watercolor like creating a sense of texture and also color mixing which I have found more difficult with watercolors than with regular oil-based paints. I can't say that I have fully mastered those skills yet, but I am learning and am overly pleased with my amateur watercolor efforts thus far. Skillshare makes it easy with classes that are designed to fit your busy schedule. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, and it's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and that Skillshare is constantly adding new and exciting premium classes for you to explore. So if you're interested in exploring your creativity with Skillshare, the first 1,000 people to click on the link in the description description box below will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you for hanging with me for this casual book haul and I will see you again soon. Bye!